Magic. Ritual. 101. Introduction. This kind of blasphemy and swearing constitutes the worst kind of refuse and dregs of the earth, and punishment of these profane magi is well deserved. From Pseudomonarchia Diamonome by Johann Weyer The scriptures of Western monotheism are very confusing. So open to debate are they that no two people familiar with them interpret their meaning the same way. The three major world religions formed around these scriptures have long attempted to unify their adherents' interpretation of the scriptures, and each has kept one-third of the scriptures as its sole possession, denying the validity of the other two without their own portion which they unanimously claim to be the most necessary key to all the scripture's interpretation. Because it is not human nature for anyone to interpret anything in exactly the same way as anyone else, these religions have long used the practice of magic to hypnotize their adherents into unanimous interpretations. But just as the three religions have split up their scriptures between them, so too have they divided among them the methods of magic they use to hypnotize their adherents. By doing this, they have divided among the three of them the single metaphysics of magic, and thus none of them fully understand the practice of magic, of which they each possess only one third part. The result is the hypnosis of their followers by a third of the true metaphysics of magic. Only the recombination of all three monotheist world religions' methods of hypnosis of their adherents will restore the true and original metaphysics of magic. The true metaphysics of magic itself affects the exact opposite of hypnosis on its adherents. It awakens them to the true nature of the world. Thus, by dividing the scriptures into three world religions, each one uses a third part of the true and original metaphysics of magic to hypnotize their adherents. Only by studying all the scriptures of these three major world religions of monotheism can one begin to understand the true and original metaphysics of magic. This practice is the pursuit of awakening to a true understanding of the nature of the world. By recombining the scriptures of the three monotheist world religions, one accomplishes an awakening from the hypnosis of the three religions, which each demand the strict obedience of their adherents to one specific interpretation of their scriptures. To go into the details of the three monotheist major world religions divided scriptures, or methods of hypnosis using only partial elements of the true and original metaphysics of magic, is irrelevant. No consensus of interpretation is possible, even in a couple. However, the facts that these religion scriptures are individually only partial, and that by dividing the true and original metaphysics of magic only affects hypnosis of their adherents, are undeniable. Despite the confusing nature of the scriptures of Western monotheism, the consensus opinion is that the basic premise of monotheism is, nevertheless, an absolute truth. Regardless of the endless debatability of interpretation of these scriptures, all alive will agree on the essential truth of the basis for belief in a monotheist God. The fact no two people can define their God exactly the same way is taken as proof of the existence of a single deity common to all, approached uniquely by each individual. The universal law proving the omnipotence of the monotheist concept of God as a single deity is defined by its irony. Because the true and original metaphysics of magic has been divided, 
and the three major world religions of monotheism each only possess a part of its original practice. The common belief among all adherents of monotheism, regardless of their religion, is that the universal law proving God's existence is an ironic incompletion of any and all natural events without it. Because of the universality of this law of irony, we impute the existence of a single sentience superseding any and all natural events. This proof by the law of irony for the existence of a single omnipotent sentience superseding any and all natural events depends on the division of the scriptures among the religions that results in the hypnotism of their adherents. If the scriptures are recombined, the true and original metaphysics of magic can begin to be comprehended. At this point, the understanding by the individual student of the recombined scriptures of universal natural laws supersedes the belief in the proof for God by the universality of the law of irony. What is thus explained as the will of God by those who see only divided parts of the true metaphysics of magic is, by anyone who understands the scriptures in their totality, better explained as resulting from further natural forces than are yet comprehended by those who study only a divided form. The universal law of irony is replaced by the comprehension of the true metaphysics of magic in the mind of someone who has replaced belief in one single religion's interpretation of divided scriptures with the study of them all. This does not disprove the existence of God nor does it replace the will of God with solely natural forces. However, it is only through a comprehension of the true metaphysics of magic achieved by studying all the monotheist religion's scriptures that we can better understand the existence and the will of the one true God. Dogmatic faith in the interpretation of a divided part of the monotheist scriptures provided by one of the three major monotheist world religions, cannot provide as much or as complete a comprehension of the existence and will of God as is accomplished by studying the recombination of all three major world religions' monotheist scriptures. When we say that the law of irony as proof for the existence of God willing into being any and all natural events is not only based on a divided comprehension of the true metaphysics of universal law, but is altogether replaced by the comprehension of this true metaphysics when one recombines all the monotheist scriptures and breaks the spell of the three major world religions of monotheism. We mean that all that which appears as ironic and is taken as proof for the will of God, is comprehended according to its true cause. But this does not prove God does not exist. Nor does the complete comprehension of the true and original metaphysics of magic, as only universal laws, elevate an awakened adherent of a dogmatic belief in one of the three world religions, to the status of God themselves. Just by knowing the way universal laws work, one cannot affect their will on them. Magic is defined as only manifestation of one's own will over any and or all natural events is incomplete. By knowing and applying one's comprehension of natural laws for someone whose knowledge is inferior to one's own, may effectively accomplish the illusory appearance of such magic to an inherent of dogmatic belief. However, this is far from being complete comprehension of the true and original metaphysics of magic. 
the true and original metaphysics of magic, comprehended as all natural laws, supersedes the dogmatic faith in magic as simply sensory deception. Thus, all past definitions of magic as only manifestation by osmotic mental projection are false. Because a higher comprehension of universal natural laws allows only the illusion of magic as manifestation of one's own control over these laws. Because the three major world religions of monotheism each possess only a third part of the scriptures of monotheism and use their portion to hypnotize their adherence into dogmatic faith in a single interpretation of these thus divided scriptures. Because they lack a more complete comprehension of universal laws and so label irony as magic and proof of divine intervention. And because they use their third part of the complete comprehension of the true metaphysics of universal laws to hypnotize their adherents. For all these reasons, magic, as defined as manifestation, is ubiquitously outlawed by each of the three monotheist world religions. Each cites quotes from their own portion of the monotheist scriptures in support of this, but the ban on magic as the attempt to elevate oneself to the status of the one true God by manifesting their will over any or all natural events is unanimous among all three. This hypnotic dogmatism of belief in magic as merely manifestation has led to a ban on almost any new form of comprehension of natural laws. However, just as studying all the monotheist scriptures elevates one's comprehension of the existence and will of the one true God, so too does practicing magic in the form of studying natural laws break the spell of hypnosis cast by the three religions. This is the real reason magic is anathema, not because it is evil or goes against the will of the one true God. It is because it threatens breaking the hypnotic dogma of the three major monotheist religions of the modern world. Therefore, the true metaphysics of magic as universal law is neither known nor advocated as allowed to be known by any adherent of these three monotheist religions. Nevertheless, studying the recombination of the monotheist scriptures and better comprehending natural laws neither disproves the existence of God as an invisible omniversal sentience nor elevates the practitioner of such study to the status of such a deity. Magic is not an offense to God. It is a threat to religion's authority.